Hey kids, I'm Pastor Joyce, and I'm here to share with you Jesus' teachings on prayer, taken from Luke 11, 1 to 13. Now prayer was a common practice for Jews during Jesus' time. They pray at least twice a day, in the morning and at night, to ensure that God's law is written in their hearts. And if they pray before every meal, that would make five times a day. But Jesus' disciples noticed something. His prayer was different from those of the Jewish religious leader. Heck, it was even different from John the Baptist, his cousin and forerunner. Somehow, Jesus' prayer had more authority. But how so? They weren't even sure, even after following him for three years. One day, when Jesus had finished praying, one of his disciples finally asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray, just as John has taught his disciples. Now this was no light matter, because they were all grown-ups who had prayed all their lives. They had been taught how to pray since they were a little kid. So basically, this was a child's question, and it could look silly in the eyes of the teacher and the other disciples. But this disciple cast away all his worries and fears in order to learn and grow. There's no dumb question, right? At least, that's what he hopes. But he knew that prayer was important for defining who we are in relation to God and his creation. He also knew that John the Baptist was teaching something new and something different from the traditional religious leaders. Surely, Jesus, the one that John kept talking about, would follow in that new way also. But what Jesus went on to teach was even more revolutionary than John's. This was Jesus reforming his disciples' identity, and they made sure to write it down in order to help the early church understand their unique identity in relation to God and the world. Now Jesus didn't frown at this question. Instead, he took this teaching opportunity to teach all his disciples on how to pray. He began, when you pray, this is what you should say, Father. Whoa, Father? Hold on. This is God Yahweh we're talking about here, the one creator above all. We don't even dare to read his name in the scripture. Yet Jesus is saying that we could come before him and call him as Father? Incredible! May your name be honored. May your kingdom come. He is the mighty God who deserves honor, glory, and worship. And his coming kingdom on earth is filled with his goodness and righteousness. Give us each day our daily bread. He is our provider and we don't have to worry because he sees our needs every day and is able to fill us up. Forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone who sin against us. He is a God of love and mercy. He does not calculate your wrongs or condemn you for your failures. And in turn, we can forgive those who wrong against us and free ourselves from that bitterness. Keep us from falling into sin when we are tempted. God's wise word is like a lamp that lights up our way and guides us. Even though we may still face temptation of all sorts, following Him will prevent us from making the wrong choices, causing pain and suffering to ourselves, others, as well as offending our God. So who is this God we're praying to? Let's recap. He is our Father, our King, our Provider, full of love and mercy, our role model, our light, and our guide in life. By knowing who He is, as revealed to us in His Word, we now know how to align our prayers and life to Him. Then Jesus continued to teach His disciples on how to relate to God. He said, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to stay with me, and I have no food to give to him. But that friend answered, Don't bother me. The door is already locked. My children and I are in bed. I can't get up and get you anything. 
Jesus then said, He won't get up and give you bread just because he is your friend, but because you keep bothering him, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So when you go before God in prayer, be bold and persistent. Jesus further states this by saying, Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Anyone who asks will receive. Anyone who searches will find. And the door will be opened to all those who knocks. Now the reason why we can be so bold and persistent in prayer is because our God is our Father. Jesus then turned to the fathers and asked, Suppose you have a son who asks for a fish. Which of you will give him a snake instead? Or suppose your son asks for an egg. Which of you will give him a scorpion? Even though you are evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will our Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Therefore, have faith in our Heavenly Father that he knows what is best for you and will give that to you and walk forward in life with that kind of a confidence. Now kids, prayer is actually super powerful when we know how to align our hearts to God. By knowing Him well through the Bible, we know how to ask and to pray effectively. We can be bold and persistent, even to the point of being a little annoying. But ultimately, after lifting our prayers to Him, we can fully trust that God knows what is best for you and will give that to you. There is nothing better than living life with this kind of a confidence, knowing that you got an awesome God who's got your back. And now as a bonus tip, when we pray, we pray in the name of Jesus. Because it is by His blood on the cross, we can come before a holy God, blameless and clean, to ask for whatever we need. And at the end of prayer, we say Amen all together. This is an ancient Hebrew word from the Israelites passed down to the early church, meaning, let it be so. And so when we say amen all together, loud and clear, we are basically saying, we all agree, let it be so, may it happen.